Welcome back. A Westchester-based nonprofit working with veterans, needy children, and the homeless is now at the center of a spending scandal. The Journal News has been investigating West Cop, and its report says financial mismanagement has caused internal turmoil and also big questions about where all that money is going. You can read the story at lohud.com right now. It'll also be in this Sunday's paper. And joining us now, investigative reporters George Fitzgibbon and Mark Longarello, who broke the story, and they join me now. And, and Mark, first of all, a lot of people might not be familiar with West Cop. Give me an idea of how long it's been in place and the kind of services it provides. Well, it's been about uh, 52 years at this point. Wow. Um, and yeah, they, they, they administer uh, the Head Start program, they, uh, the daycare centers, and they also run a number of uh, programs for, you know, homeless shelters, uh, uh, veteran support programs. So they, they have a lot of different, uh, a, a, a wide reach, let's say, in Westchester and the surrounding area in terms of social services that they provide. George, first time in your memory that they've come under the spotlight for something like this? Um, as far as I know, uh, I mean, this essentially began um, with uh, a federal lawsuit, which we call, you know, a, a whistleblower lawsuit, filed by the former chief financial officer, and that was filed in February. So that's kind of what got us, you know, looking into it. We found that there was additional uh, reviews. There were two audits uh, from the, uh, you know, state attorney general, one directly about its finances uh, and another about the Lois Bronze Children's Center, which is a, sort of a, a, you know, under the umbrella uh, of West Cop in terms of funding. And we sort of began from there. And, you know, this is a significant nonprofit. It's budget of about $37 million a year, almost entirely uh, county, state, and, you know, federal funds. And, uh, Mark, what's the, what are some of the allegations that, that you're uncovering here? Is it, is it that the, the group is spending poorly or is it individuals are spending for themselves? What's, what's the issue here? There, the allegations are, there are many. So the main, uh, the gist of it is the uh, intermingling of funds, money that was supposed to go to one program that were being used for another program, but that includes um, money that was also being used for uh, staff perks, uh, and also even allegations that, you know, some people weren't putting in full work days behind the scenes and that kind of stuff. So uh, it's, it's intermingling of funds probably at the center of it, but it goes even deeper than that, that there was some behind the scenes shenanigans as well. So is it your sense at this point, both of you, that, that these are a few individuals at West Cop that have misbehaved and mismanaged, or does it seem to be almost endemic to the culture uh, at West Cop and that there seem to be enough examples that it looks like this is just happening all over the place. Well, I mean, we're going on the allegations that were out there and, you know, some of the investigative stuff uh, that was done before we got involved. Uh, but the um, allegations point towards sort of systemic mismanagement, uh, both of finances and of staff. Um, there was one claim that, uh, you know, there was a, an, an employee who presumably uh, left work very early after as little as an hour at the office and then he went home to New Rochelle where he runs a, a python uh, snake breeding business. A snake breeding business. Snake breeding business. Which would probably not be in West Cop's purview or charge or responsibility. Um, uh, <laughs> you know, we're told that he occasionally did bring the snakes into the office oh my goodness. to show them to sort of staffers. I don't know if they had presentations for <laughs> kids at some of these Head Start centers, but um, it, clearly the allegation is that staff were allowed to sort of work shorter days, uh, oh. you know, despite being paid full time. Uh, and as Mark said, that's kind of the gist of it, that there was this, um, the Head Start program in particular is the largest program run by um, West Cop, which by the way is a Westchester Community Opportunity Program, if we didn't uh, clarify. Okay. Uh, and that Head Start funds were used to sort of plug budget gaps and, and sort of, uh, there was one instance where there was an allegation that uh, veteran services funds were actually used to give an employee, um, you know, a hefty pay raise. So it's, Mark, it's a private institution, it's a, it's a, a non-profit. Uh, it's its own entity. It's not a government agency or anything like that, but it gets most of its money from the public. It's mostly taxpayer money. Are there any additional rules or regulations that you know of when it comes to financial reporting and oversight for entities like West Cop who get so much of their money from the public dole? There, there's clearly a gap there, and I think that that's what we're seeing with these allegations and some of the other uh, documents that we've looked at. The, they are not a government entity, but they're administering programs through the Westchester County Department of Social Services, for example. Uh, and we found that they were notifying the Department of Social Services as far back as uh, uh, 2009 
Uh, well, 2012 is when they uh, they wrote a letter. They were overpaid $279,000. By 2013, they were saying in a letter that they were struggling to survive and barely uh, living check to check, essentially. So, uh, yes, they're they're a private entity, but you know, there's they're also uh, working, you know, uh, with these county and right. different governments that maybe are not overseeing them very much. Any sense as to whether there was oversight from the county or the state or whomever was providing those funds to make sure that their funds were being spent the way they were supposed to be? Well, understand that um, as a nonprofit, they are required to file annual uh, disclosure reports about their finances and financial activity, both with the IRS and with the state attorney general, um, which we've reviewed. The problem with that is there is a lag time of two or three years um, from the time they have to be filed, uh, uh, you know, so they're not public for a, a right. period of time. There are also annual audits that are done um, for Westcott uh, by a you know private accounting firm. However, that is largely based on what the agency reports in terms of their finances. So, for instance, if they did use say Head Start funds to plug a gap in another program, that might not does not necessarily show up in that audit, and in fact, it, it didn't. And they're still getting public funds? They get, um, it's about $37 million a year now. All of their funds are public. If, if you look at their nonprofit filings, it details who gives them how much. Uh, the only, uh, and this is part of the problem, um, there's about 400000 a year that they have to raise because there's certain expenses, lease costs and, and so forth, which are not reimbursable. In other words, you can't use tax dollars for it. So one of the allegations is that they did a very poor job of uh, fundraising and therefore, you know, had to sort of, um, you know, move things around to make, you know, to uh, basically to balance the budget. Final question. Um, I know Rockland is looking about pulling their license. What happens now? I mean, do we expect investigations from the municipal entities, from the county governments? We well, the Rockland legislature is calling on uh, the executive Ed Day to veto an existing uh, contract, $160,000 roughly. George Latimer, the Westchester County executive, told us he's going to look into it. And the Westchester County legislature uh, may call them into the Social Services Committee, you know, legislative subcommittee to review how they're policing right. this and other nonprofits. So we will see this all play out in the weeks and months to come, and no doubt in the pages of the Journal News as well. Marco Lagarello, George Fitzgibbon, as always, thank you very much. Great job. Thank you. We'll take a break. When we come back, we head out to Long Island for an update on the Mangano corruption trial. Stay with us.